All right. Um, hey, part two for our identify, um, sorry, birds of prey identification. Um, part two, we're going to focus on the Part two, we're going to focus on the owls of Minnesota. Um, still very much birds of prey. Um, however, I like to do these um, as kind of their own group because they have a much different strategy than um, the falcons, the hawks, and the eagles have. Um, we haven't talked about competitive exclusion yet, but when we talk about ecosystems, um, a lot of times you talk about different niches within that ecosystem. So different organisms have a place they live, a uh, type of food that they hunt, uh, kind of this role within the ecosystem. And typically you can't have two organisms that fulfill the exact same role. One is going to outcompete the other one. Enter owls that are going to eat the exact same food as hawks are. Um, however, owls occupy that niche at night. All right, so that is that is why owls exist. That's why they're so different. They don't care, try to compete with the hawks. They let the hawks hunt during the day, and then they take the night so they can both exist in that same spot. And if you look at it, their bodies are built for night hunting. They are not built for speed. They're not built for power. They're, bu they're built for stealth. All right, these are kind of your 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 ninjas of the of the birds of prey group. Um, we're gonna have a picture of an owl, what an owl looks like without its feathers, and it's a little disturbing. Um, here is an owl. If you took all of its feathers away, and so you can see, they're actually they're not very big. Um, all of those feathers tend to act as a sound deafen or dampening system, so it keeps them quiet as they are hunting their food. Okay, so that is the role that owls play. We're going to identify some local Minnesota owls here. Um, first one is the barn owl. All right, uh, it's the strangest looking owl. It looks completely different from the other ones. It kind of has that rust colored body with a white heart on its face to always think of. Um, it has a white belly as well. Um, it's not particularly common in Minnesota, but it is common in agricultural areas. So hence the name barn owls. Um, they tend to hang out on, on farms, in particular in the barns of those farms, um, hunting the, the excess of rodents and whatnot that can be found there. So number one's the barn owl. Next one is the barred owl. Okay, let's get those two confused there. Um, the barred owl is common in eastern Minnesota. It's got these dark eyes, like it's got a bunch of eye makeup on. Um, it has this brown ring around its face, if you look at it. All right, it's got that brown ring around the face. Its chest has these vertical bars on it. That's where it gets its name. Okay, so if you look at its chest, it's got these vertical bars going up and down. Um, there is there are no ear tufts, so it has a smooth head, um, and it lives in dense forested areas. Uh, it has a very distinct call. Give me two seconds here. Let's see if I can somehow get this pulled up so that people can hear it. I may look goofy in the process holding up to my uh, um, holding up to my microphone here, but like I said some of the especially some of these owls. These are things that you hear at night. And you are, um, oh, what, what kind of thing is that? And I'm sure you've heard a barred owl before at night. All right. I'm going to try it here. I have no idea. There you go. Hopefully you got that. You're entertained. If you didn't get it, you can look it up on your own. It, uh, like I said, it's a common one that you, that you hear a lot. Uh, the burrowing owl. All right. These are going to be found mainly in the western part of the state. They're huge over in South Dakota and North Dakota. They live in prairie dog burrows for the most part. Um, they have these goofy long legs. They're kind of quirky looking um, things. Um, but they're going to live in the burrows mainly made by prairie dogs and then um, the western part of the state there. Um, badgers can also make those burrows too. So they don't dig their own. They rely on others, but they actually play a, um, a role in that ecosystem. All right. They kind of protect the prairie dog community a little bit. They're kind of an alarm, um, alarm system for them there, but notice 
make sure you look at those long legs. They spend a lot of time on the ground um, walking around. So burrowing out, western part of the state. Next up, the screech owl. This is a very small owl. All right. Um, it has little crucifixes, so little crosses on its chest. That's one way that you can identify it. Um, it has these these uh, huge uh, ear tufts up there. Um, on there, and it lives in deciduous forests and suburbs. Um, and like I said, they're really small. Okay, they're they're gonna they're gonna fit in the palm of your hand as you're going. Um, so not very big. Let's listen to their call now. A little screechy, I guess. All right, something like that. So screech owl is very small. Look for those big ear tufts, and then like I said, this one on the the right, this gray one's pretty. You can see that. The kind of the crosses on its chest there. 17, great gray owl. Um, I have seen um, one of these in Minnesota before. It's mainly in the north in Canada, but it range will, di will dip down into the northern Minnesota woods. It's got this deep voice to it. I know I got to look that one up, huh? Um, I like my owls, I guess. Um, it is a big owl. Maybe the biggest one that we have in the state. Could be. Don't quote me on that. Um, so it, it range dips down. It's big. It stands, you know, two and a half feet tall with a four to five foot wingspan. No ear tufts. And it's got these dark circles around its face. Here's a look at one. There's an look at that thing. It's going, it's, it's, it's trying to hunt. It's going to grab a, something's wriggling around underneath the snow there that it's going to grab. Um, but just an impressive looking owl in there. Um, we'll take... Yeah, a little noise around here. Um, dark circles around its face. Here's the sound of its hoots. I said real deep with its voice there. The great gray owl. All right. Not to be confused with the great horned owl. This thing, its nickname is the tiger in the sky or the tiger with wings. It is fearless, all right, and it is and, uh, intimidating. One of the few known animals that will actively hunt skunks. It has no fear of of the skunk spray, all right. So it'll actively go after those. It gets its name from these large ear tufts, all right. So these large feather tufts on its head, hence the great horned owl. Kind of looks like like a, like devil horns coming up there. Um, they're medium in size, and I have definitely, I always think of it kind of as an orangish looking look, even more, not necessarily rust colored, but more orange colored in there with the great horned owl. Next up, the snowy owl. Um, I've actually, they've, I've seen these in southern Minnesota before, believe it or not. I was, I was shocked. I was one of the, one of those winters where it's really cold. Um, it lives in the Canadian tundra. And it'll migrate throughout Minnesota in the winter time to come on down. Um, and it's that bright white look to it. Um, it's got a little bit, it's got a black beak, beak and some speckles um, throughout its body to help camouflage, mainly in the winter time. Think about that. Uh, and it prefers to hunt in wide open territory. Okay. It's not going to spend a lot of time in the woodlands. It's used to the tundra. Uh, and where I saw it was out in the, the, the southern kind of the prairies in there. So the snowy owl. Northern hawk owl, cool looking owl, kind of goofy one, not gonna be on the test. Um, it very some rarely travels down from Canada. Um, the short eared owl, um, well, it sure looks like the no eared owl, but it's the short eared owl. Um, it's worth bringing, uh, it's worth um, pointing out. It is a rare species. It's declining populations, and the main reason why is it hunts in open prairies and marshes, and those are two ecosystems that are disappearing from our um well from our country uh from the world um but in particular from minnesota prairies get plowed under for farmland and then marshes you know we, we tend to try to drain those or we, we tend to try to um make use out of that that space in there um it has that kind of tan actually tan almost like a cream colored underbelly um and it has the dark 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 circles around its eyes there for the short eared owl Northern Solwood, I think, is the, the cutest owl on the uh, list, if you want to call it an owl. Some people don't. I call it an owl. Um, but it's extremely small. There's just a, just a little guy in there. And then it's maybe not the better, better picture. I do not. Um, it has kind of this white X 
kind of going across its nose there. I always think about, so kind of a white X. Um, it's got these bright, big yellow eyes. Uh, it's got a choppy ring around its face. So you see it's got the ring, but it's got the kind of the streaks through it. Um, and it's got kind of a rust colored plumage on its, on its chest there. So the Northern saw what one of the smallest owls, I think the smallest owl on our list here. And then last but not least is not an owl at all. Um, it's hard to, I didn't know where this one fit in. The Northern Shrike, it is. I'm talking for a long time, I had said that twice. Um, it is um, also known as the Butcher Bird. And I like talking about this one. It looks just like a songbird. Like you wouldn't think anything of it. Maybe this thing's eating, you know, seeds and different things like that from bird feeders. Um, absolutely not. It is a hunter. What it does, well, how it gets its name, is it actually hangs its food up to dry. So it'll it'll kill uh, a rodent. And it's it's fitting that we see them a lot of times on barbed wire. It'll actually skewer that mouse or whatever onto that barbed wire and let it turn into jerky. It'll let it dry out and it'll kind of pick pick at it for several days there because it can't eat it all in one go. So here's a look at um, what this bird does. It'll take it, it'll kill it, and then it'll skewer it on somewhere. And then it'll eat off these thing, this thing for a couple of days. So we're ending with a more morbid bird and the, the northern shrike there that we see um, throughout Minnesota. So um, anyway, hey, we are going to stop there. Um, that is a lot of birds of prey. I would make sure you're getting studying on those and you feel, you're feeling good about about um, uh, about those birds. And even check out some of those extra bird calls if that's something that you're you're into there. So anyway, have a good rest of your day.